Okay, as you can see in today's video, we're going to go over a problem involving gravitation, and we're going to be calculating the total mechanical energy of this little puppy right here. This is actually once again Sputnik. Sputnik, you remember, was launched in October, on October 4th, 1955, 55, 57, I don't know where I got 55 from, 57. It was the first artificial satellite to orbit the Earth. And we're going to calculate the total mechanical energy of Sputnik when it was in the air orbiting around the Earth. Now, the total mechanical energy, TME as I wrote here, total mechanical energy, is simply the sum of its potential energy and its kinetic energy. Now, all we're going to do is calculate the potential energy, then we're going to calculate the kinetic energy. We're going to do those things separate, each one of those things separate, step by step. And then we'll just add them together at the last slide. Okay, and we'll see. It's kind of an interesting result, I think. And uh, this is the equation we use to calculate the potential energy for an object that's orbiting a more massive central object. So this is Sputnik, and it's, ob or it's orbiting. It's orbiting the Earth. So the potential energy is minus. Don't forget the minus sign. I explained why that's minus in a previous video. Minus g. G is the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared kilogram squared. Don't forget the units. And then you have m1, which is the mass of the Earth, times m2, which is the mass of the other thing, which this is the mass of Sputnik right here, 83.6 kilograms. This is the mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And then we're going to divide that by the distance between the two objects. Now you have to remember, once again, when we're using this equation, R stands for radius. The radius is the sum of the two distances, which one of those is the dist is the radius of the Earth, plus the height that the object is above the Earth's surface, because this radius R is actually the distance from the center of mass, center of math, center of mass of the Earth, which is the center of the Earth, plus the height that the object is above the Earth's surface. And so we're gonna, this is the radius of the Earth. This is the height that Sputnik orbited the Earth above the Earth's surface. We're gonna add those together to get R, which we're gonna do right now. We're just gonna plug the values in. Minus 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. I didn't put the units on these because I don't have enough space. So I wanna keep it a little neater. Then we're gonna multiply that by M1, which is the mass of the Earth in kilograms. It must be in kilograms, so your units cancel. And then uh, Sputnik's mass has to be in kilograms also. Usually the masses are given in kilograms, so I just put down the two masses there in kilograms. And then we're gonna divide that by the distance between them. Now the one thing to remember, and one of the things to remember, is that the distance has to be in meters. This R has to be in meters, because here we have Newton meter squared, kilogram squared. In order to cancel, get everything to cancel, uh, we have to have this in meters. So here, 6,371 plus 580, is 6,951 kilogram, kilograms, kilometers. And then a kilometer, of course, is 1,000 meters, so just multiply it by 1,000 or 10 to the third. Sometimes you'll see this like 6.951 times 10 to the sixth, but I left this in kind of thousands, and then I put here times 10 to the third. You do that, and you get that. Uh, Sputnik has a potential energy when it's above the Earth's surface um, of a minus... 480, 484.80 times 10 to the ninth joules. Okay, gigajoules, those are joules, okay? So that's the potential energy. Now we're simply gonna calculate the kinetic energy. Now this is very interesting, I think. Remember, here's the equation for the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Now we don't actually know the velocity. We don't really wanna take the time to figure out the velocity. Uh, we could you do that, but and then you'll do that, you get the same answer. But this is the velocity. Now, the equation for the velocity of that orbiting object is that the velocity is equal to g, the square root, it's important, the square root of g, gravitational constant, m1, the mass of the Earth, and then r, that same distance uh, from the center of mass out to the center of mass of Sputnik. But you see, so this is the equation for the velocity, and here we have velocity squared. So I'm simply going to take this term and substitute it into this equation for v. But you see, this is v squared. If I do that, if I square this term, then I just get g m1 divided by r. And if I do that and I just get g m1 divided by r, when I substitute that in, then you'll see I get 1 half g m1 times this mass. Now, these two masses are not the same. This is the mass 
of the earth. This is the mass of Sputnik, and this is the radius, the distance. So you'll notice now that the kinetic energy is really equal to one half, and this is the equation for the potential energy, which I get when I substitute that in here. Fascinating. So the kinetic energy of the object is half of the potential energy, just like that. So if I know the potential energy, which I already calculated the potential energy, it's actually minus 4, but when we calculate the kinetic, we don't put the minus sign because the kinetic energy is not a vector. It doesn't have the minus sign, so I just put down here 4.80 times 10 to the ninth, and then I'm going to multiply that by 1 half. This is 0 0.5 times the potential energy, and I get that the kinetic energy is equal to 2.4 times 10 to the ninth, right? 4.8, half of that is 2.4 times 10 to the ninth. Now, all I'm going to do is just add those two values up. So remember, we're calculating the total mechanical energy of Sputnik. Here's my two values, my potential energy with the negative sign. Don't forget the negative sign for the potential energy. It's important. Here's the kinetic energy. It doesn't have the negative sign. I just add those two values up, and you get that the total mechanical energy of Sputnik is minus... 2.4 times 10 to the ninth joules. Okay, and I want to just point out something really interesting as a kind of a continuation of what we said about the kinetic energy. But remember, we said the total mechanical energy, just add those two together. Now remember, we, we calculated the potential energy, which was has a negative sign in front of it, and then we calculated the kinetic energy, we said that's half of the potential energy. So then if I add those two up, the total mechanical energy is simply equal to half of the potential energy. You can see I got that right here. Here I have the potential energy is minus 4.8. Here's the total mechanical energy was well, half of that. Okay, so I didn't really have to calculate the kinetic energy. I can just say, oh, the total mechanical energy is half the potential energy. I calculate the potential energy, cut it in half, and you get the total mechanical energy. Okay, and that goes back to the equation I showed you on the previous slide where we substituted the orbital velocity equation v equals the square root of g m1 over r into the kinetic energy equation, okay? So there you go. I hope you found that interesting and fascinating. I think that kind of relationship between the potential and the kinetic energy equations or values for those orbiting objects is pretty interesting. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with your friends. Show them that you care.